Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition. There's a little bit of a dry spell right now in terms of videos regarding the PlayStation 5, so I figured I'd do a video about it. There has been some misconceptions as to what the one with the optical drive does, what it has, and the one that is just the digital version alongside the different accessories that we were shown in the live streams talking about these accessories and whether or not they're included with these consoles. So we're going to be going over the specs of each different versions, the pricing, which one works best for everybody, and go over maybe some of these misconceptions that people have had about the console. So let's just start with the regular one, the one that does have the optical drive, and yes, that is a 4K Blu-ray player drive included in this version, which is going to be the $500 version. And then we have the digital edition console, which is just $400. And the first thing I'd like to point out is yes, obviously the optical drive is gone, but the stand is also smaller on this one. So take an eye on the stand. The stand actually curves up here. This is a little minute little change. It's a little bit smaller here. Not that that really probably does a lot, but that's just something I'd like to point out that maybe the stand will be a little bit smaller. It might fit a little bit easier for some people. I think this is a little bit bigger to have a bit of extra strength, but that's the only things we could tell from looks is the actual drive is gone and the stand is a little bit different with the digital version compared to the standard version. But let's get into the brass tacks. Let's get into the actual specs of this, starting off with the hard drive. So the hard drive is a 825 gigabyte SSD. So that means it's going to be a faster deep. It's not a magnet drive. So it is a SSD, which means it's going to run a lot faster and have faster load times. Not only that, but download times as well because it is a SSD instead of it being a hard drive. So that is the first thing that you can sort of point out for this console. Keep in mind, this is the you know regular version of the console, the $500 version. So it is 4K compatible with HDR, and you have two USB ports, Tempest 3D audio tech, not 100% sure what that is, some mumbo jumbo I'm sure on their side. So you have two USB ports, HDR, a 825 gigabyte SSD for the storage type, internet connectable, we figured that, two USB ports, which I believe are both on the front, no games included for this. And alongside that, we do have some included software, which is the Astros Playroom, which I think this is going to be is similar to certain applications we've had on past PlayStation consoles. I think this is just going to be a playground for you to, you know, use the controllers, sort of rumble technology, different things like that. I don't think it's going to have a whole lot included with that, but we have some software included right off the bat. The AC power cable, the HDMI and USB. So yes, we are going to be getting a whole new <laughs> HDMI cable. I'm sure you already have one, so you pass consoles, so you're gonna have another one. The USB and the AC power connector, and you're only going to be getting the one controller as well. So with this whole bundle together, you're getting the actual 4K Blu-ray player, AC power cord, HDMI, the USB for your controller, the Astros Playroom, and then one controller. That is what you're getting in this whole bundle. That's all there's going to be for this version of it. So keep that in mind. Yeah, wireless controller, HDMI cable, AC power cord, USB cable, that's all there's going to be for this, for the standard one with the disk drive included. So let's go on over to the actual digital edition of the console. So it's going to run you $100 cheaper. So it's going to lower the price by $100 just to get that 4K HD Blu-ray player out. So if you look at that compared to like real life, that's actually really good. So they're trying to justify $100 being that Blu-ray 4K player, which Honestly, if you go out today, check your Walmart, it's probably going to be somewhere around that price, like $80 to $100. So that's good, but we're talking name brand 4K HD Blu-ray players. $80 to $100 is probably what they're going to be and probably what Sony would actually justify this as. So taking away the extra $100 is actually kind of worth your money in the end of things. But let's go over what this has exactly as well. You'll notice that pretty much all the features are exactly the same. It is a 825 gigabyte SSD for fast loading speeds, blah, blah, blah. Now, here is one of the things I wanted to say in this video regarding the PlayStation 5. It says 120 frames per second, which is good and all, and it can be run on that, but in HDMI does have a hard time for that. HDMI 2.0 has a even hard time with it as well. So regarding frames, 
That is technically true. It might be able to do that with some displays, but I'm not 100% sure if that's technically what's going to be going on with all games. So keep that in mind that every single game might be pushing at 120. Certain, um, you know, consoles can't always just do that. And you also have to have a monitor that's capable of doing that as well capable of having those amount of hertz um, as well so you get the high dynamic range with this as well two usb ports some people thought that maybe this version would have more it doesn't have more usb ports the same amount of usb ports are there there is no blu-ray player we knew that it's all online has that hdr wireless controller hdmi cable ac power cord usb cable like we thought it would include but that's it there's nothing technically new for this some people thought that this would get a bigger hard drive space when no it doesn't it has the exact same hard drive space a lot of times whenever this was coming about and people were talking about the digital version a lot of people thought that maybe the prices wouldn't change the only thing that they would do is just up the hard drive space on the digital version so add a 100 dollar ssd now to this let's say maybe like two terabytes if this thing was two terabytes that would be pretty cool. I actually think both these consoles are terabytes. I just think that the on, like the motherboard, the on console data is taking away that much to where you're only getting 825 gigabytes of that storage. I believe that's what's going on here. It's probably actually one terabyte that 100 something another is actually just going towards the functions of the actual console itself. That's more than likely what's happening because of that. Seems kind of weird for them to like, oh, 825, we'll put that in there. No, I think this is because of how much the online system is going to have to have in terms of data. This is a next-gen console, so it might end up taking more than what the PS4 does. So that kind of makes sense, actually. But hopefully all the features are worth it and taking that much out of the hard drive. Yeah, hopefully that all ends up making sense in the end. There better be some good features for that. But that's it for just the consoles. So... This is literally the exact same thing as the PS5. Nothing new, nothing added. You get your controller, HDMI cable, your USB. That's it. Two USB ports. That's pretty much it, guys. That's all you're getting. And I believe there actually is an HDMI in the back now that I think about this. Or not HDMI, but a USB in the back because I don't believe those are two USB ports. So I think there's one in the front, one in the back. But that's literally all you're getting. You're getting the $500 console with the disk drive, and then you're getting the $400 console without the disk drive. That's it. They're just taking it out. You don't get more hard drive space or anything. You get one controller. You can plug the thing into your TV, and you can charge your controller. That's all you're getting. No games or nothing other than the Astros Playroom, which might be some kind of gimmicky thing, but it's not really, I guess, a full-on game. So... Really, it's up to you, depending on whether or not you just want to have everything digital or if you want to have everything be possible to at least be on disc. You don't have to have everything on disc, but boy, if you're spending an extra $100, you probably want to make sure you're getting all of your stuff on disc if you're getting the <laughs> the big you know, PS5 console with that 4K um, Blu-ray player. At least you can play Blu-ray discs on this if you already have some which is nice to have and if you have older ps4 games it's nice to have that on there too you're gonna have to buy them again and download them again a lot of people are talking about the backwards compatibility and the thing is in order for to for you to play those backwards compatible games you need to have them on disc to put them into the ps5 certain newer games coming out now give you a possibility to buy the game for technically both consoles if you pay an extra 10 bucks which is good and some people will have some games actually linked to their account they download them on their account and that'll carry over but like me, I have all my Borderlands games on disc, including my PS4 versions of the games that I have them on disc. I don't have them downloaded straight to my account. So what I have to do is I need to have a disc drive to put the game into to play them in terms of their backwards compatibility. So keep that in mind when you have certain games that you want to have backwards compatible with. You might have to bite the bullet on the $100 price tag if you know for sure you want to play those games on the next-gen console on the PS5 because of the SSD you're going to have much faster load times which is mostly what's going to be offering it might try and upscale the graphics because of it having a better graphics card in it but it's simply just going to be upscaling it's not actually going to be making it any better in order for a game to have HDR it actually has to have HDR in it or an update to have HDR included so 
In terms of it so-called looking better, it might look a little bit better, but it's not going to be doing a whole lot. The best thing about it is the SSD, which is going to help those backwards compatible games that you have a disc for, for the PS5 that has the disc tray, they're going to be loading a bit faster. So maybe your Skyrim, stuff like that, big games like that. Those are the things to keep an eye out for. But to end this video off, I wanted to go over the accessories here. So <laughs> some people thought all of this stuff was included, which <laughs> seeing the price on each of the individual things now, it'd be like an extra like $200 if you were going to buy all of this stuff together with the console. So I thought that to be kind of funny how a lot of people thought this all was included because the Xbox, typically, they had the H their HD camera with the last-gen consoles included. You had to have it. That was just mandatory. You were going to have that. And the PS4 had a little wired headset that you could plug in. Not really a headset, I guess an earbud that you put in that you could technically, it was really bad and it sounded really bad that you could take right out of the box, plug in your controller, and the boom, you could start talking to your friends immediately right after unboxing your console you didn't have to go out and buy a headset you probably did but still be uh <laughs> don't uh, <laughs> don't get me wrong here most people probably did go do that but you technically didn't have to do that but this does not include any headset neither version of this includes any type of headset now most people out there probably have headsets that are going to end up working for this which is good and makes sense to be honest i understand them not including a headset for this but if you're a person that is Maybe this is going to be your first console. You're not going to have a headset included for this. You're going to have to make sure that you have a headset in case you want to play this. And you're going to also have to have PlayStation Plus in order to play this online. The PlayStation Plus is better with its benefits for this. But that's a whole thing for another video. But you're going to have to buy your own headset and have to buy a PlayStation Plus membership in order to play online. So keep that in mind. But... Let's go over the pricings of the different things. So we have the DualSense charging station, which is a little station you just plug the controllers onto. This is just the station, not the actual controllers themselves. And it's going to run you $30, which is pretty normal. These things are kind of gimmicky, and I think a lot of people don't end up going for them. You're only getting two USB ports on the PlayStation 5, so maybe this isn't a bad idea if you're kind of a family person, you have lots of different people in the family. Maybe you like to play co-op games where it's like five or six people with controllers, so maybe this is something that you could look for if that's something uh, you know, along your, your sort of deal over there. HD camera is 60 bucks, which is kind of crazy. I know 1080p little you know webcams that go half the price. So this, I know for sure, is one of those things that's like, ups up marketed a lot because it's a sony thing i don't care who you are i do not recommend buying this at all even if there's a couple games that have it and it's gimmicky i wouldn't recommend buying this thing at all on the other hand the media remote oh baby this thing i do recommend <laughs> this thing is cool there's a reason it's out of stock but keep in mind most of this stuff will come back into stock it's just out of stock right now it'll come back give it some time guys but the media remote here, which is, it's beautiful. I think the PS3 had this, but it skipped over a generation on the PS4. This is a thing for you to be able to navigate your PS5 just like a TV remote. It's pretty simple as that. You have your arrow directions, the volume up, volume down, a button for Disney+, Plus, Netflix, and Spotify. Finally, Spotify is getting some love. And then YouTube as well with a little playback, you know, go forward, go back. Maybe that's a... Um, Q, something like that, volume buttons, TV, but not only that, they have a little microphone at the top. So you could tell it to say, hey, turn the volume up, go to Netflix, do this, do that, and it'll actually do it for you, which I think this is a very cool accessory. 30 bucks for it as well. If you're a person that uses your consoles as your full on entertainment system, this is a pretty good idea for you because you're going to be able to have that access to it whenever you do that. So that's kind of nice to have and honestly probably one of the nicer accessories and it's not super pricey either it is just a controller or just a remote but it's kind of a smart remote it has the voice recognition as well and it's going to be connecting hopefully via blu-ray not infrared if it's blu-ray then or not blu-ray but bluetooth hopefully it's bluetooth um just like the controllers infrared is why you have to always you know, hold your hand up with the remote when you're trying to click through channels, which is kind of bad. Infrared's really bad, but if it's Bluetooth, then we know it's going to connect pretty easy. And these $100 headset, I hate to say it, but the PlayStation headsets are always overpriced. Once again, it's like the HD camera. It's just sort of a thing where 
they're just trying to make it overpriced because it has that Sony name on it. I'd give it a year if you actually do want these because I think they'll probably mark them down a lot. Most of the stuff here in general will probably get marked down. I don't really see the DualSense charger really getting much lower, but the Pulse 3D wireless headset is something that's going to be a part of their whole new thing with the 3D audio. They're focusing a lot on audio with this year with the PS5, which I think is what why they're calling these Pulse 3D wireless headsets because I think they're trying to make these headsets be able to fit with that whole 3D audio aspect of things, which is pretty cool. I'm glad they're doing that. I've seen some people have some of these Sony headsets. They're not too bad, but I'd recommend something like HyperX or maybe some of the higher end Turtle Beach headsets. Nothing of the lower ends or mid tier, but higher end Turtle Beaches or a HyperX headset I think would work a lot better in my personal opinion. Because I have a Hyperhead or HyperX headset, it works for a PC, any console, it, it works for everything. So I recommended something like that, not getting these headsets, but that's in the end all up to you. So I've gone over all the prices of these. I think with this assumption and all of the <laughs> analyzing we've done here, you could probably figure out which version is right for you. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Like, comment, subscribe for more content. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.